Welcome back and thank you for staying with us. As part of efforts to restructure the security infrastructure of the country, the Senate has called for the decentralization of the Nigerian police force into 13 zonal commands. Each is to have independent operational and budgetary powers. The lawmakers also urge state assemblies to make necessary laws to legalize community policing to be established at the local government level, while state governors should fund the community policing from grants appropriated to each local government. And still with us to discuss this is Dr. Dio Kayode, a political technocrat, live in the studio. And joining us live via Skype is retired Air Vice Marshal Femi Gbadibor. Thank you very much, Air Vice Marshal, for joining us. Thank you for having me. And how are you doing this evening, sir? Great, thank you. Great. The lawmakers urge the state assemblies to make necessary laws to legalize community policing to, to, establish, to be established at the local government level and that state governors should fund the community policing from grants appropriated to each local government. Do you believe these levels of government are ready for such responsibility, AVM? Uh, unfortunately, no. They have not been structured to take on that kind of responsibility. And uh, the problem the police continues to have is that of funding. Uh, I think the, the, for the federal government to, or the legislators to be thinking about that, they must come up with appropriate funding uh, procedure that would make sure that the money gets to these various levels. Once that is done, then we're in business because uh, police has been restructured, as you know, over the years from a simple structure that we had in the 60s of a police IG with three, uh, one deputy inspector general and uh, six AIGs. And Four effective commissioners in Kaduna, Lagos, Enugu, and uh, Ibadan. But somehow, this transition started and we've gotten to where we are now, that we've got hundreds of police commissioners and AIGs and everything all over the place. But each time we have a problem, um, you see the IG having to dash from one point to the other or setting his deputy DIG operations, which means the Despite the centralization that was supposed to have been achieved by this numerous AIGs and zonal commands and every other thing, uh, command and control is still from one central point. One man sitting in a seat in Abuja, and then uh, his deputy inspector general operations. So it's more a question of funding, and I hope that they can they can see this way through. Right. Um, the retired VM just said it's more of a question of funding than, uh, than the, the decentralization being called for right now. Do you want to quickly react to that? Yes. You see, uh, number one, what they are trying to do, for me, it's okay, no doubt about it, but then there are some flaws there. Okay. The flaws in terms of, look, this funding we are talking about, it's not that they have not been funding police from the onset. They have been funding police appropriately. But utilization, utilization and allocation of such money is what is having problems. And which is the same thing we have been seeing in all parastatas, our budgeting system and all that. So if only we can correct that area of appropriation and utilization of funds will be okay. Now, now again, yeah. I will not want the governors to be pitching money from local government money to fund the police because it is an avenue for governors now to be exercising their authority on local government money, thereby eradicating what has been done on local government autonomy. All right, AVM, you did say it's, 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 a, it's an issue. Uh, he said it's, it's an issue of appropriation and funding. You did say it's an issue of funding. Do, do, you, do you disagree with him on that? Um, I, no, I don't disagree on him. I think, you know, really, um, federal government should take a decision. Are we running a federal police? And if we're funding a regular police system, then there should be a way that funds can be generally re uh, di released directly to these various commands. You know, trying to tell the, you know, the state governments or local governments to fund, there is a withdrawal in a situation where one government will say we have funds, another will say we don't have funds. And 
uh, and let's not forget, you know, who pays the piper dictate the tune. So you end up in a situation where a, a, a state government or whatever now begins to direct exactly how the police can work in their state. So the funds are there. They should be rationalized and sent down just the same way the federal government is able to send funds direct to the local government. The police uh, service commission should be able to send funding direct to the AIG in charge of the zone of command. Now, in the light of this AVM, do, do you think there's a possibility of some kind of monkey business on the part of a state or local government in the disbursing of funds to maintain the potential community policing? Definitely. Um, you know, the state government has enough problems with funds management. Um, now you are telling them to, to help you to fund the police, which is really what it is. Um, it's either you are sending extra funding to them for the police, which should just go straight to the police, or you are asking them to look for funds within their resources, their meager resources, to fund the police. Now you'll have um, different levels of funding per state, which is not correct. It's supposed to be uh, more or less the same kind of funding. that will go down to the AIG and so on. Mm -hmm. Dr. Dio. Yeah. You see, I will see, I will see, repeat it. It is all about allocation of resources now. We have enough money being allocated to the police. Let me give you an instance. You two, you can go and do your research. The uniform that the police normally wear is supposed to be free for them, right from the top, distributed down. But do you believe that some people corner, always corner those uniforms and then be selling it to them? I have, I have seen policemen buying their uniforms themselves, even up to buttons and shoes. Do you understand? So no matter how we try as much as possible to, to decentralize the police, no matter how we, ah, but then we, we have been seeing metropolitan police abroad now, and they are all well funded. Okay? The money given to them are well appropriated. So not until when we clear the systemic problem that is facing our country, there is nothing we will do that we show. There's no doubt about it. The policy is good, but there is this done this that is affecting our system. So when we treat, it is only when we treat, we are able to treat that jaundice, that then we'll be able to move forward. ABM Sir, now if this decentralization should come into effect, what could happen to um, security outfits like uh, Amote Kungwe and the likes? I think they would still, um, <laughs> that's interesting. Uh, they would still function because they have been set up by regional uh, government, so to speak. But that's where the issue of funding comes. Uh, you cannot expect the state governor to be funding two things. If, if you even look beyond this, they're still talking about, um, you know, they're still talking about another form of policing that the state government should fund, you know, on their own. So you are trying to put too much responsibility on, on uh, a state governor. I think the issue that the, the assembly should be thinking about is one. Do we want a federal police system that exists now, or do we want a state-run police system that is run where it will be decentralized and you have units like you have in developed countries of the world, where even a local government will be responsible for their own police, and they have a regional uh, you know, authorities and so on. But funding is the main key here. As my brother said that, you see, if you give funding direct to the AIG, the AIG can take orders from Abuja, especially when there is a conflict between how a state wants to run things and how the federal uh, authorities want to run things. But if you ask him to now be totally dependent on the state governor, then he's going to have to, you're going to have areas when he'll be forced to, do, to um, disagree with instructions coming from Abuja, okay? But if you can, in fact, if you take it a bit further, if you can fund all the AIGs, I can assure you that within a very short time, this simple issue of uniforms we're talking about, will find some states that, were, that are well kitted or better kitted than others. Because the truth is that we have different levels of leadership and management and even, uh, you know, uh, sophistication amongst our police officers and amongst everybody. 
So you'd find some people would rather have themselves well represented by their men, and some people just would not care. So you would find if you go to certain levels with the Mopol, you'll find the Mopol with the VIPs. They're very well dressed. Why? Because somebody is going out of his way to make sure that his escort, his oddly, whatever, looks good. And okay. the truth is that extra funding has been provided. All right, that. quickly, quickly, AVM, we're running out of time, but I need to ask you this um, finally. Now, the issue of grant that the federal government was, has also urged, um, has been urged to financially support the community policing initiative with an annual grant. Do you believe this should be left as a grant, which the federal government can decide to give or not give, or should, should it be constitutionally um, something that should be embedded? Well, if we're going to have community police work very well, I'll, I'll, I will just ask that the federal government stay off this issue of bringing the police, I mean, the, the, the state and the local governments into supporting the funding of the zonal police commands and let them leave community policing to the states and the local government. That way we'll have a structure where there'll be a minor... Uh, community police run by, by the local government chairman and a slightly bigger one run by the state's governor. And that will bring policing right to the door of everybody. Retired Air Vice Marshal Femi Gbadebo, thank you very much for joining us and for your insightful contribution. Thank you for having me. Now, Dr. Dio, quickly, please. Now, yes. You see, the solution to the whole thing, we have, we have had a series of the problems we have discussed about the problem. Let yes. me tell you the solution. Simple solution to this. The zonal policing system they are trying to create, fantastic, okay, down to local governments. What they can do, what government can do is allow a kind of LD rivalry to exist amongst them. You see, I don't want to, I don't want to take you to something like, say, restructuring now. Mm -mm. Let us take police as is. If Zone A is allowed its autonomy as regards operation and uh, funding, the same thing to Zone B, the same thing to Zone C, and like that, you're going to see that each and every one of them will want to say, yes, my own zone is better than yours. Through one, training, equipping, and then making sure that they are doing what they are supposed to do accordingly and appropriately. So, what I'm saying in essence is, as they are going to create all these zones, let them be. But then also let each zone be empowered separately from other zones. Okay? I mean, so that I be a kind many, of many people are going to argue that there could be a downside to that also. That could a be kind an, of what? There will be a downside to that when you allow every zone to have autonomy to, to fund in and operations that... That is, that is you again bringing no, listen. The, if the for police, corruption. Yes. If the old police, if the budget for the old police is like 100 million in a year, this 100 million distribute it equitably if, even, evenly, yeah. amongst them. Okay. And then watch out how each and every one of them will spend that money. All right? Now, the police service commission will not be the one to know how to monitor them to ensure that there is healthy rivalry and to ensure that they are performing their duties accordingly. Dr. Dio Calder, we're out of time, but thank you very much for joining us on the show thank, this thank evening you, and for your you. contribution. Thank you. thank you for staying with us. We'll take our plush report now, and when we return, I'll be giving you my take. Stay with us. The acting chief judge of Imo State, Ijoma Agugwa, has set 18 inmates free in line with the presidential directive on the congestion of correctional service as part of measures to mitigate the spread of coronavirus. Speaking after the two-day exercise at the Correctional Service Center in Oweri, the acting chief judge charged the released inmates to be law-abiding while warning members of the public against discrimination. And, uh, uh, fortunately, we struck out three matters because of death. And then uh, we granted quite a number of bills. Then most of the cases that had been abandoned, we sent them back to the various courts, magistrate courts, high courts, to continue trial. 
and because of the COVID uh, lockdown, I've moved most of the courts. Uh, Omo Agua, um, Abombi, I've moved all of them to sit in our way to expeditiously discuss. Well, uh, since yesterday we have been having these activities, and the activities is tagged Go Delivery. Go Delivery is the visit of the Chief Judge, the State, the Correctional Center, at least every three, three months. I'm also in view of uh, the presidential directives to uh, decongest the correctional centers coupled with COVID-2019. There was a directive, hence the visit of the chief judge. And here is my take. My advice to the House of Representatives on the control of infectious diseases bill it's for it to be put forward to a public hearing where stakeholders' contributions will be sought to make improvements to the bill before it is revealed and debated by the Committee of the Whole. Then, from the accumulation of these myriad views, suggestions and good faith critics from within and outside the House that they should arrive at final legislation that meets the present and future needs of our country and which we all can support in good conscience. Human rights are fundamental rights. Fundamental rights are human rights. For too long, Nigerian rights and African rights have been trampled upon by slavery and colonization. Now Nigerians have made a stand and are clearly saying no to this bill and will not have their fundamental rights and right of consent as UNESCO Declaration Article 6 trampled upon. And as for the decentralization of the police, I believe we are not yet there. I also particularly hope that this call by the Nigerian Senate comes from a place of genuine care for the Nigerian people and their protection. While it is still obvious that the state and local governments are still very dependent on the central government, I believe implementing this without proper arrangements, plans and clear-cut responsibilities will lead to a colossal failure and would further weaken the country's security infrastructure. I urge the government to ensure everything necessary for this move is in place before any implementation takes place. And that's all for the show tonight. Thank you for joining us tonight. Join us again tomorrow, same time for interesting conversation. Have a good evening and stay safe.